the nice thing about AMSA, besides the fact that the microphone makes me sound incredibly loud, is, uh, is that we're a family. And there's nothing that AMSA can do together as an individual. And although I hold the title of the national president, and I've taken a year off of my political duties to live and work in Washington, D.C., I certainly don't do this alone. So I actually am proud to welcome up to stage with me Brian Hurley, the AMSA national vice president, a fourth year student at the USC Keck School. So if you guys can get that one, welcome And right now, hey everybody. What's up, AMSA? <laughs> we had like two pots of coffee on our time this morning, so understand what's going on up here. Um, but there's a lot of things to talk about in medicine, and there's a lot of things I can say about AMSA. But I think before we delve into the history and a lot of the programming, kind of why AMSA exists, let's ask ourselves why we're here. And if you notice, we're in California. We're here because a billion people in the world subsist on less than a dollar a day. Natural disasters like the tsunami in Southeast Asia, and Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, which ravaged the Gulf Coast. We're also, we also have an unrelenting HIV AIDS epidemic with 44 million cases of HIV worldwide, as well as a growing obesity epidemic. And Brian, 47 million Americans cannot go and see a physician regularly because they don't have health insurance. And despite all the rhetoric on TV and all the presidential candidates, uh, healthcare reform looks, looks much like this uh, Groundhog or, um, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like, it's a lot, looks a lot like healthcare reform in the United States right now. Um, and a broken healthcare system where we're facing not just physician shortages, but nursing shortages. We have overcrowded emergency rooms as well. And it doesn't help that society is increasingly seeing medicine as a business rather than a steward of health. That's true, Mike. You know, students and physicians alike are overworked, crushed by mounting student debt. I have to study things like anatomy, <laughs> patient confidentiality. Wait until you guys have to sit through your HIPAA presentations when you study your clinical work. We have to learn things like physical diagnosis skills. Test taking, I know I saw Kaplan here, they're probably not too proud to see that, but that's what it looked like for me in many days. And uh, the, occasional, the occasional legal professor, and Brian, I'm sure you didn't have any of these professors at USA. I, I certainly have not, Mike, no. But it's in this context that we have AMSA, a fully independent medical student association dedicated to true patient advocacy, student well-being, and to making the world a better place. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, Mike. Absolutely not, Brian. I think we should rewind back to the 1950s when medical students called on the AMA to recognize their growing force in healthcare. And that's all about the SAMA, the student AMA. You can see here at University of Michigan student Warren Mullen, he was born as the first SAMA president. Uh, I also saw the founding of our journal, the journal of the student AMA. Hello, my you know, advertising policy certainly left some room for, for a question. And Brian, as the vice president, I know that you're aware that we have corrected those problems. And the journal is now called The New Physician, an award-winning magazine that all AMSA members receive today. But things were going to be a little rocky, Brian, in the 1960s. You know, Mike, why don't you tell us what happened? I would love to. So in the 1960s, SAMA members certainly weren't mainstream in the AMA. Particularly divisive for the students was the AMA's silence on the Vietnam War, their silence on issues of civil rights, and then their active opposition of the Medicare and Medicaid Act, arguably the most successful healthcare reform we've seen in the 20th century, covering America's vulnerable populations. So it looked like SAMA members felt the need to make some noise. And in 1968, SAMA jumped ship, announcing to the AMA House of Delegates that SAMA is now a completely independent student association. Right, it looks like the delegates were a little less than happy to hear the news. Uh, no, in fact, they were not. But since that day, AMSA would be truly independent, dedicated to true patient advocacy, student well-being, and changing medical education for the better, particularly in the arena of diversity in the physician workforce. A few years later, we had our first woman president, and we arranged a letter from AMSA, or from, from SAMA, to AMSA. You know, right, those weren't the only changes going on in AMSA at the time. We moved from our hometown, Chi-Town. Anybody from Chicago here? Woo! Yes! <laughs> Some represents from Pritzker over there. Um, to our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. It also saw the addition of a second full-time student, our legislative affairs director. Hey, Mike. Ryan, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. What about me? Ryan, who's this guy in the back? Mike, that, that's uh, Claudio, our Jeff Rutledge fellow. Yeah, really, Mike, uh, you're, you're the national president. You, uh, you work with this guy full-time in the national office. Anyway, also, uh, in the 1980s, there was a growing AIDS epidemic, which is a health issue for our generation. Sadly, the disease of one of our own uh, inspirational president named Jack Rutledge, who since named a full-time fellowship and is not in the Jack Rutledge fellowship. Adding to opportunities and voices for students, um, in a way, we saw tragedy strike AMSA once again on September 11th, 2001, when Paul Ambrose, our 10th Legislative Affairs Director, passed away when his plane crashed into the Pentagon. And since then, AMSA has named all of our Legislative Affairs Institutes after him to recognize his role in health policy over the years. Most recently, three years ago, we added our Global AIDS Fellow, a student who takes the year off, who actually just got rid last night, uh, he got back from Tanzania and had to be uh, admitted to the hospital for malaria. Uh, but he's taking the year off working on HIV AIDS, both domestically uh, and globally. And our fifth student who takes the year off with us is Lindsay Works with me, Paige Hatch, our Director of Student Programming, a job Ryan, I think you may know a little something about. In fact, I do, as the Director of Student Programming Master. Excellent. 
So the question is, with all these students taking years off and being an independent organization of students, what is it that we've done and what is it that we're seeking to do here as medical students, as pre-medical students, as residents, as physicians? Well, these leaders and other leaders, Brian, have yeah. certainly, uh, I'm probably taking care of no, another. It's not a whole <laughs> Anyway, they certainly left our mark on uh, medicine over the years. So we, Amazon was instrumental in structuring the HEAL deal, which was the first student loan program that brought relief from excessively high interest rates. We were also responsible for changing the National Residency Match program that changes the program to favor candidates' choices as opposed to the program's choices. We also, speaking of uh, match Michael, Amps has been responsible for bringing a number of couples together over the years with a higher success rate than, I don't know, JA perhaps. <laughs> hey Mike, isn't that you proposing to a, uh, a fellow board member at our convention this past year? Yeah, Brian, it isn't. I think you were there because you should remember it. <laughs> But that wasn't the only thing that AMSA's been up to. Uh, AMSA was certainly pivotal in the founding of the National Service Corps in the late 1960s. This is a scholarship program and a loan payment program for physicians and dentists and other primary care providers who choose to practice in areas of medical need once they're done with their training. Probably one of our more successful initiatives was residency work hours. In uh, uh, 2004, AMSA filed an OSHA petition along with Public Citizen asking and enforcing the ACG needs to limit the work hours of residents. Our understanding was that it would be too tight to drive home from the hospital, probably too tight to operate on patients in the hospital. Also, our Farm Free campaign, which is coming up, our National Farm Free Week, it's an effort for medical students to stand up and say that the integrity of our profession is certainly not for sale, and definitely not for the cost of a few pens and a few clipboards. That makes me hungry for a little bit of Prozac right now, man. <laughs> you know, Mike, we're also talking about the legacy of the AMSA Foundation. This is a picture of AMSA Foundation students and program leaders meeting with former Surgeon General David Satcher. Our AMSA Foundation works on a number of programs related to complementary and alternative medicine, and life care, and cultural competency. You know, Ryan, throughout all these years, AMSA has certainly grown quite a bit as well. Spanning over 10 regions, we have medical chapters of all osteopathic and allopathic medical schools. We have over 68,000 members, contributing over a million hours of patient service every year. Not only that, as the only medical organization that charters pre-med chapters, we have over 200 chapters now and over 5,000 pre-med members. You know, enough of this bureaucracy, Mike. <laughs> what do AMSA members really do? We have the heart and soul of AMSA. AMSA's eight action committees related to topics on global health, health policy, medical education, and others. We also have a number of interest groups on topics related to military medicine, geriatrics, primary care, mental health. With all of this programming, Mike, I would think that AMSA would need a place to house its staff and the interns and a lot of the people that, that come through the office. You know, Brian, as a fellow employee of AMSA, I hate to remind you that we do have our lovely townhouse in exotic rest of Virginia. Not to mention AMSA's big house where myself and the other student fellows live. You know what, it's not just that. When students do have free time like myself, AMSA members have been known to take to the streets and raise our voices up for the change in healthcare. These are AMSA members in Philadelphia marching through the streets calling for HIV AIDS medication across the globe. These are uh, number of students and AMSA members marching on the Massachusetts State House, calling for healthcare reform, much needed healthcare reform. And then these are students turning up the heat at Houston at our Region 579 Regional Conference, calling for healthcare reform in the South. AMSA members were also greeted by a, uh, a parade of honking horns and cars at our Northeast Regional Conference as they marched across the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, AMSA members were also called out at the International AIDS Conference last year by Alexis Bill Clinton and Bill Gates. Actually, you know, Ryan, at some of these uh, rallies and marches, they've got some pretty good looking speakers on that one, too. Yeah, Mike, I guess we thought the bow ties were. Really <laughs> Ouch. Well, Brian, I had to ask you, what have you been up to then? Well, you know, Mike, I participated in Farm Free Day at George Washington University this past year. I also took to the streets of New York in front of the United Nations, demanding that nations keep their promises on healthcare workers in, nations, or in the places in the world like Africa. Additionally, I uh, was participating in the rally in, in uh, Chicago, where our national convention was two years ago. Speaking of national conventions, most recently, AMSA members stood on the steps of the United States Capitol, calling for our legislators to expand and reauthorize the state children's health insurance plan, as well as calling for our Congress to support a African Health Care Capacity Act, which would actually place health care workers in Africa, not just provide the medication, but provide the services for people to be part of that culture, be part of that society, and provide those services. In fact, you never know who you're going to run into in AMSA. This is AMSA's first Global AIDS fellow, Tina Wu, UCLA, med students, MS3, also final six on the bachelor, if you guys watch TV. Uh, hang out, get cozy with Richard here at a CNN HIV AIDS special. Uh, Bill Clinton, joined by AMSA member Bill Greenhunt, a student at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, getting to know each other at the same event. It's true. You never really do know who you're going to run into in AMSA. Including folks like Patch Adams, this is the uh, former acting surgeon general Ken Ward Studio, and uh, Brian, I also think we ran some pretty interesting folks at our Region 8 conference in Des Moines. In fact, we also were joined by presidential hopeful Barack Obama at our Legislative Affairs Leadership Institute last year. And Perry Neal, presidential candidate Dennis Kuzinich, seems to pop up every time we have a conference. Uh, I guess he must have missed his flight. <laughs> Uh, we've also been joined by the likes of Louis Sullivan, founder of Morehouse School of Medicine and former HHS secretary, also author of famous works on looking at the diversity of the healthcare workforce in the United States. We're also joined by the dish in Southeast Asia, Sanjay Gupta, at our most recent uh, convention in DC where he talked about the impact of the media on healthcare in the United States. Now, speaking of conventions, Mike, I believe there's one coming up next March in Houston, Texas, March 12th through 16th, uh, Healthcare Revolution Mike. Absolutely, and I hope all of you come and join us down in Houston for this conference. 
We are going to have amazing keynotes. It's going to be off the hook. Hundreds of sessions. All this stuff you may be learning here, and the ability to interact with thousands of other students across the country. You know what? AMSA does something else very well. We like to throw down and party. In fact, I think you got a, a, a back full of water balloons that day. You can also see Dan Murphy in the middle is our legislative affairs director, um, Nancy Maytag, our director of student programming, and Frank Chow, our national treasurer there at our chapter officers conference. Was anybody here at the chapter officers conference this year? Well, I'm <laughs> right there. You can ask them how bad they got the host, too. But anyways, AMSA, AMSA is a family, and we have a culture of having a lot of fun. There's a lot of serious work that we do. We take to the streets, we meet with people, we craft legislation, we pass bills, but you know, that's not always, we like to have a lot of fun. So you don't mind from our roots back at Santa? To our current vision, which is AMSA. I would hope that all of you feel part of the AMSA family here. Welcome to the American River College Conference. Brian and I will be here all weekend. Flacco is in the back with our Jack Rutledge fellow. You can pick his brain about healthcare reform. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Juman, thanks for having us. Thanks for the gifts you left me in my hotel room. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you guys. Uh, Brian and I will be giving a session on uh, leadership and healthcare uh, later this afternoon. So good morning to everybody, and thanks for your time. We appreciate it.